Hello and welcome to um, another video by myself, Richie. Uh, today we're looking at Mountain Blade Warband and I'm going to be showing you how to farm the Sea Raiders in the North to make money to get yourself going early on. Mountain Blade is a sort of a strategy RPG game where you control like one main character and some mercenaries and you take contracts from uh, leaders and lords and you can own businesses and stuff like that to generate money and your mercenaries cost you money each week so you have to try to offset your costs and there's also a good bit of party management so I'm just going to take a quick look at the party management now yay and you can see my group so my guy's name is Lolly it's a girl and uh, those guys at the top the Shavi, Jarmus, Frentis, Marinid they are sort of I call them heroes they can't be killed they can get knocked out and they can't be killed and they're useful as a screen a meat shield to protect your other mercenaries stop them from being killed sometimes sometimes handy just throw them in the way and uh, but the main bulk of my force is made up of archers and crossbowmen so the way this works is we go up and we fight the sea raiders we kill them take all their gear and sell their gear basically and uh, the position of your troops is, that's what I'm just going to show you now, just how to maximize killing the enemy. So the Sea Raiders themselves, they live far, far north of the map, so I'm actually just at the very bottom. And we're going to travel all this way up to here. So we've just skipped ahead a bit, and uh, I've come across some guys, and I'm just going to fight them now. Some bandits. These aren't the actual Ice Raiders, they're just normal bandits. But let's see how this goes. So the tactics can be used here are basically the same as the one I'd use against the Ice Raiders. So we have our different groups of guys, cavalry, archers, and the heroes. I've no infantry in this, um, but sometimes I do, and I just keep them back. So basically, um, I use the menu system, the battle system, and I move everybody up. Everybody ups forward, and then I put the heroes to one side, and I put the cavalry to the far side. So you end up with a kind of a straight line of archers with... Uh, on either side horsemen. Now it's very important that you have them split up like this. Well, maybe you could do it otherwise, but this way you see the guys, the enemies are all like running straight towards us. And we'll just give a breakdown now of this again. So the enemy is indicated by the arrows and our archer line is indicated by the white arrows. And then we have our cavalry on either side. So basically um, the enemy just keeps walking straight towards our archer line. The arrows keep pinging them, keep pinging them. You can see all the green lines telling me every time I've killed somebody. And then we're basically just waiting for them to make their way up the hill. And then uh, when they're close enough, I tell the cavalry to charge. So it actually takes a little while to get that command out, but um, the, the battle's pretty much over. The enemy was fleeing that time. And... Uh, so it works. It works very well here, does it, uh, because these guys are so lightly armored as well. The actual charm shooters I'm using, they are top tier. They are like the end level for the Rodok faction. So they're the best crossbowmen. I think I also have some uh, mixture of different kinds of archers in there as well. I'm not too sure why I did it that way, but generally speaking, the crossbowmen are the strongest one. Their ar arrows or crossbow bolts. I mean, they just pierce armor pierce armor so much better but still even against knights and stuff like that this tactic wouldn't work so great um, so that's that battle over it gives me my screen there and you can see that uh, we've rescued some prisoners and this is where you could recruit guys if you needed to but I'm not too bothered and part of the tactic here is to take stuff from the dead bodies so the item list for the very very top is the most valuable one so that's the items you want to take so I'm just gonna go ahead and take these items here so that one is only worth 300 and uh, so you can see that the value is going down each time. So I didn't bother taking anything else because the value of them is just so low, so there's no point. Unless your shop skill is very high, you won't get that much money from this. So in this method as well, I also have a good few horsemen. So that's something I didn't really talk about in the other way, but the horsemen are a critical part. They're the punch. So the crossbow guys whittle them down, and then the actual finishing blow is the cavalry. If you don't have cavalry, the enemy will just walk straight up to your archers and crossbow guys and just kill them. Um, so we're just going to take a look at my weekly budget. So you can see, like, I'm actually, I make money from the uh, ironworks of Luca and Shiriz. And it doesn't offset the total cost for the mercenary group I'm having. So that's why I actually kind of need to do these raids on the ice raiders to keep myself going. The plan here would be to get another couple of uh, ironworks and then you'll be able to afford... Uh, an army this size. 
of about 30 guys isn't necessarily a big army, but um, like it's actually pretty small. So I think the more you level up as well, so you put more points in leadership, and it lets you have a bigger army for less cost before you like join a faction and uh, start to like take over your own villages and castles and stuff like that. So I think in this recording clip, I'm actually going to head up and visit Sargoth, but I don't think we really need to see that. Basically, I'm going to go up and just sell this stuff. Um, but there's no need really to see that, you kind of know what's going to happen. So flash forward about 10 minutes or so and uh, we're actually now up at the part of the map, the Sea Raiders appear, the Viking type dudes. So you can see them running around in circles there and uh, we're just going to attack this small group here. So sea Raiders are actually pretty tough, if you're not like, you don't have a good enough group, you, it's hard enough to do these guys, but you can take on smaller groups. Until you get to a high enough level, they're always pretty small groups, and then they get really big, and it gets pretty hard. So we're going to do the same thing again. If you don't give any commands, your guys just charge forward. Um, but I don't necessarily want them to do that, so I'll use the balance system. Just tell everybody to line up in a straight line. Um, and this map doesn't suit this tactic so well. See the way it's all hilly and stuff? The Sea Raiders are actually going to kind of surprise me here. And they're going to jump up a lot closer than I expect. So I'm going to tell my guys to just get out of the way of the archers. The archers can't fire there at the moment because the guys on the horse are right in front of them. But uh, just get them the fuck out of the way. Go on, go on, off you go. I actually quite like the battle orders in this. So it's not exact. See that they're still like not just out of the bloody way. There's one dude on the horse just in the way. So we're just going to tell him to like get over there. I accidentally told him to stand directly in front of the archers. So I think as well my um, bad orders as well didn't help. So look, there you are, the guys are right in front of us now and they're pegging their spears. And the spears are strong enough to kill one of my uh, crossbow guys. So um, I just give the command everybody charges. and uh, But again, we have them pretty much stitched up there at that stage. So... Um, that probably wasn't such a good example of the tactic because it was just it was over so quickly, but that's what you want. You want it pretty much quick. Gone. Done. Take your stuff. Um, get your loot. Because we are just farming the Sea Raiders. Um, so let's do another one now. On PS4 this game auto saves. I think it's auto saves on PC as well, but it's really noticeable on PS4. So we'll attack another one of these groups. There's 31 Sea Raiders in this one. So we charge them down. It says the same thing again. And uh, we rock in. So this map suits my tactic really well. So we have like a nice big open area. So I tell everybody to line up, line up. And uh, I send our... I actually tell our archers to walk forward. And I tell them to spread out a bit. And I move our cavalry to the left and the right. I'm also pretty sure I had this set on easy as well because I get hit with an axe at some stage and usually that kills me straight away I like charge in a bit recklessly so we've uh, I've got my three heroes that's like the camp followers or whatever way off over there and you can see the archers just like pinging away and there's my cavalry on the left So there's a Nord Archer, he just kind of stands out a bit compared to the other guys, but I think he's as good as the others, I'm not too sure, I think the crossbow men are the best archers. I also have Swedian archers down the far side. So the guys are very very close now, so I charge in like a dope, <laughs> I'm on my horse, and I skewer a guy. My horse is extremely slow though, um, and like <laughs> can't turn quick enough. But uh, at some point here, I think I got a belt of an axe in the face. There we go. Ouchies. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I think this is on easy mode. Otherwise, I'd be dead. So generally, just advice not to put yourself on the line too much. Because what happens is they take you prisoner. And you lose all your guys. I don't think it's, it's, not, it's not game over, like, but it's a bit of a... It slows you down a lot. Um, being killed. So... Try to avoid it. <laughs> General advice for life. Uh, another thing that kind of annoys me with this game, it's just not finished, so it looks really weird the way like that axe is just buried in the side of her neck. So you can also take people as slaves. Uh, I don't have enough scale points put into like 
prisoner keeping, so I'm just going to take those two guys. And again, we lift the stuff off the ground. So that brownie's worth 795, which is a good bit of uh, dinars, really. Um, and their javelins are worth a good bit, and their axes are worth a good bit. It's worth an awful lot more to buy these things yourself, so this is another good way as well, if you want to get gear, is to rob these guys. Um, if they're like a resource that just keeps on giving, and you can just keep taking them. So see the way there's like a layer over there? It's uh, up on top of that hill, Sea Raiders Landing. So they keep spawning out there, but even if that layer isn't there, they'll just keep coming out. So I'm going to just head on now and r visit Unidad and uh, buy some food for my guys. So that has been it. That's the basic tactic of it. You just um, farm these guys up here. Their gear is worth so much money to sell. And um, as long as you have a fairly good group of archers and a good group of cavalry you'll pretty much always win every now and again the groups of sea raiders they'll bunch up and instead of just fighting like one group of 30 you end up fighting a group of 60 and uh, that tactic will still work it's just that you might lose one or two mercenaries but in truth one or two of them dying doesn't it's not such a big thing i had like a lot of spare guys there um, and like you know you do expect them to die over time and a few deaths wouldn't have hurt it it would have brought down the cost of my mercenaries so i'm just fluting about here now trying to buy these dyes off these guys really cheaply because it's cheaper to buy your dyes off these guys and then sell it in a big city further away so that's why when at the start of this video i was at the other end of the map so i had to get stuff from here luxuries and sell them further back and eventually you'd build up enough money here and you'd buy a business of some kind and the business would offset the cost of your mercenaries so thank you for watching this video my name has been Richie, and now I'm going to show you some bonus footage of a group of knights fighting another group of knights. Enjoy! And let's slow it down a little bit. So, I'm just like fighting away here against these guys. And wang! Down goes the horse. Poor horsey. Go for this guy now. Uh, oh, his horse fell from underneath him too. Oh no, red guy's dead. I shall avenge thee. Take that. And that. There he goes. So it's weird playing... Oh my god, this guy is like tearing lumps out of me. It's weird when you play like a different character. They feel like so different. Um, there we go. After a good five strikes, finally get him. So let's head back in now. Take out our spear and see if we can stick a guy. I know, there's like five guys just huddled in a group. Come on now, this isn't the county council. And then, oh god, we just see this mess at the bottom of the hill. It's like everybody, it's just a mess of dead horses and dead guys. We're just, uh, ooh, good lord. Let's just take a look for a nice horse behind me. Nice fields. Some more horses behind me. Let's look back. Ah, it's kind of, well, I guess there's still corpses just falling down the hill and being trampled by horses. 